Hi everyone, uh, my name is John Alexis Guerra Gomez and I'm going to explain in this tutorial how to create a reusable chart out of any block that you find online on D3. So if you're like me, then most probably you're already in love with D3 and you have find all of those interesting blocks that you can find in my postdocs website uh, where you see very interesting examples and then here are some of mine. Um, but you will always say, well, I really like this chart, but I will like, I will like to be able to reuse that on my own, with my own data. And then maybe actually create a widget that you, I can keep on using um, every time I need uh, something very similar. So I'm going to explain how to do that using um, a very interesting um, document that Mike wrote back in 2012. Uh, where he explained how to create reusable charts. Uh, I'm going to post the link on the uh, description of the video. But then basically, if you search for this, towards reusable charts, you can read the whole explanation. And the most interesting thing in here is that by the end of this tutorial, you are going to be able to create a chart like this one, and then you pass some parameters in the format that we are used to on D3. And then the idea is that you just select an element in the DOM um, like this one in here and then we just pass the data that we want to load in there and just assign that data to the element and then we call the chart that we just created up here okay so Mike actually has an example in here that I'm going to be using in a minute and actually let's start doing that so we are going to be doing a bar chart uh, you can see that I just deleted an example that I was creating before and in here in this folder I'm actually going to open Sublime so in there I'm going to create a new file uh, in this case is going to go be called timeline chart.js that is the file that Mike created in here copy and pasting all of that in there just for reference so this is for d3 version 3 we are going to be doing this for version 4 uh, but there's not that much of a change now the next thing we need is a block so i'm going to go into my friends ians johnson uh, block builder if you guys don't know it yet this is a wonderful tool which you can actually create your own blocks in a very easy way but I'm actually going to use a tool in here that is the search tool and I need a bar chart so when you search for that you immediately get tons of interesting bar charts created by many people but I only want bar charts that work on version 4 and then on top of that I'm going to get picky and I'm going to select only blocks by the master my boss doc so when you do that then you see well here is a simple bar chart I'm going to use that one and then, as you can see, it's just a simple bar chart. And then here is the whole code. I'm going to copy all of this and to paste it into another file in here that I'm going to call index.html. And then if I paste that in there, um, and then if you take a look at the data, at the code actually in here, this is the typical creation of an SVG with the margins as Mike got us used to. And then he's loading a TSV file in here. And that file is, is just creating the axis for X and Y. And finally, it's creating rectangles or bars that are the ones that are being used to draw in the stuff. So I'm actually going to be needing this data file. So I'm going to copy that and add that to our folder. Um, save this as data.tsv so it's just thing actually works and then save that in here you can al also get, in, get the data and everything from the gist but uh, in order uh, for simplicity I'm just going to do it like this so now I'm going back to my terminal and then I'm starting an HTTP server and the idea is that if I go into localhost 8080 here it is so we actually have our chart good so now let's uh, start to try to create a reusable chart out of this. So the main thing that we, we are going to be needing is first, let's since this is something that we are going to be reusing, let's get everything that it's been done in here into the, uh, of the JavaScript part. And then 
let's pass that into another file that I'm going to call varchart.js so I just need a new file and I set this in here into varchart.js and then if I reload in here this should still be working good so no errors yet so as you can see I have some linters going on so I'm going just to do a global D3 this is just because I like this linter telling me when I'm messing up and then I'm going just to fix some of those things like Mike likes those type of, of tabulations but my linter doesn't so I prefer my linter in this case and then voila so we have this now in order to create a reusable chart if you guys go into the tutorial then you will see that the whole secret is um, being able to call my chart with a selection and then that selection is going to be an op a open element and then inside that selection uh, the idea is that that since that selection is assigned to the data that we are going to be doing some binding and i'm going to explain that in a minute then you can inside that do this so to make that more concrete let's write some code in here so what i'm going to do is that i'm actually going to create uh sorry a function that is going to be my bar chart and that bar chart is going to receive a selection and inside that uh, function the only thing that i'm going to do is just do a selection each and that is going to be called for each one of the elements that it's selected in this case since i'm only going to select one element it's going to be called once unless you do it for uh, several charts and then inside that we are going to have another function that is actually working with the data and uh, that is the one that it's going to have the the actual chart so as you guys see it's actually very similar to what mike had in here now on the other side on the index uh, the idea is that in here i'm just going to create something like my bar chart and then i'm just going to instantiate that function or call that function that i just did and then i'm going to pass parameters to that later um, but um, for the moment let's keep it like that I'm going to add another global in here just such that my linter still works <coughs> um, let me make this more readable and then the idea is that I only need to do a d3 select and then I'm going to select the chart in which I want to draw my stuff in this case it's going to be like this then I need to assign this to my data and then here is going to be my data but this is going to be done using datum and the reason for that is because we only have one um, data element so this is the same thing that if you do something like this but just to stay consistent with what mike is doing so let's do it with datum as you will see in a minute in the tutorial and then uh, the only thing remaining is just calling my bar chart inside that so as you can see this is showing me errors because uh sorry i have a mistake in here so because he doesn't know what global uh, but bar chart and d3 is so now we have that and then where is my data so i could do something like pass uh, some data in here but i'm actually going to load that from the tsv that mike prepared for this and you guys can actually see that in the block example um the idea is that in here is going to receive the callback that it's going to receive an error and the data and you can actually call this inside that now if there is any error then we just throw the error that is the typical way that mike does it and then if you look at the code it's basically this that it's doing in here so it's calling the data the tsb he also uses this function that is the one that is going to be pre-processing some of the information for us so we can also do that and use that same trick so let's do that in there so in this case this function the only thing that it's doing again um, is that for each row on that tsb file is going to set the frequency to convert it into an integer and then return the row now after that then i should be able to call this and i might have an error in here let's see this one is closing um, let's hope uh, everything else it's okay so i'm closing this one and that one 
perfect so it's still showing me an error let's see what can i do to fix that so this is passing a function um, uh, boop, boop, boop. maybe the tabulation oh yes so it's just complaining about the tabulation stupid later anyhow so i'm just calling this in here and then the idea is that inside that chart this is going to be the one that makes the data the chart so i'm going to paste all of these inside this one. Oh, and by the way um, um actually this one is going to be doing that uh bar chart and calling like that um but i need to return an element something very similar to what's happening in here so the idea is that I create a chart, I create a function, and that function is the one that is going to be returning that. So um, let me go back, sorry. So I'm actually going to do that like that. So I'm going to create a function chart in here. That is the one that is actually receiving the selection. And then inside that function, here is where I call selection each. <coughs> And then the idea is that I just return chart in here. So when I do that, uh, this function is just creating this another function. And then the idea is that inside in here is where we actually create our stuff. So I'm going to put all of this in here. So this is the one that is actually doing my chart. And then the idea is that every time I call that, it's going to execute all of this. Now, we actually don't need this uh, D3 TSB because I'm already receiving the data from there. So I can actually remove all of this. And then the other thing I can do is that, and let me tabulate this properly so my linker doesn't complain. The other thing I can do is that I can actually set some of these things to be called like in the initialization. Um, but we'll do that in a minute. So hopefully, let's see if we can get this to run. So actually, we are getting some errors. So let's see what it's happening in there. Okay. So this might start getting interesting um, because of the way that the chart works. So the idea is that we are passing here the datum, and then inside the chart, then we need to start seeing. Uh, what is the data actually applying? And I think the problem might be actually in here. So as you guys see, uh, the way that usually D3 uh, does the uh, data binding is that you receive some data and then you select the elements that you wanna change and <coughs> you pass that in here. However, the thing is that we are going to be doing all of that inside this selection and then uh, the only way that is going to work is that since the data it's already binded to the selection in here then actually um, we actually have to change this for a function so this is like a selection inside a selection and then since it already has the data binded then basically we are saying we can keep on using the same uh, data element that came from the selection and let's see if that can makes it work. <coughs> it actually doesn't. Let's see what it's actually drawing. So we have our, our SVG. Oh, yes. So that's the other thing. I forgot that I was selecting this chart, but then I don't see the chart in here yet. So let me create the chart. And then after doing that, let's see what else can we get from. So we actually have the chart. And Throwing me an error in this line, uh, maybe. Okay, perfect. So now when I start seeing inside my bar chart, <coughs> uh, the other thing I see is that it's actually selecting the SVG that it's supposed to be in there already. But as you guys can see in the index, I already deleted that. So I only have my div. So I actually have to append it. So that's why I copied the timeline chart that Mike created. And you guys can see it in here because he has a very clever way inside this pattern that is these lines in here. So the idea is that when he does this D3 select this, then it's selecting the actual element in which we are drawing, in this case, the div chart. And then he's going to select all of the SVGs 
and then assign the data that you're just getting uh, from there. So, um, and then the other thing he does is that he actually reuses all of these elements to create, in this case, area, li area charts, line charts, and then the, uh, the axis. And this is because this is a fill line or fill area uh, timeline. So I'm actually going to reuse um, pretty much all of this. And then I'm going to copy that into my chart. The other thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to move this into the top part, although the SVG is going to come back here in a minute. So um, the SVG I'm going to leave uh, later for this. And then the width, I'm going to change these things in here and you're going to see why I'm doing that. So I'm going to actually do two things. So I'm going to say, here is my inner width and here is my inner height. Um, in this specific example, he was getting the width and the height from the SVG, but I'm actually going to get that from two variables, the width and the height. And then the other thing, I just need those two variables. So I'm going to say those as 400 and height as 400. So the problem, and that's kind of one of the advantages of using Mike's examples, is that he keeps code to minimal, uh, but depending on what block you selected, things might need to be changed. So the idea is that this one is the typical pattern that he follows, like this is the inner weight that is going to be inside uh, the chart. Now going back to where we were before, so now he's selecting this, uh, he's passing that into uh, the data, and then we are going to be needing to add some extra stuff in here for a in a minute, but for the moment we are just basically uh, entering the selection, and this is basically the same thing. We can actually change this to datum to make it look better. Uh, and then he's just appending a G. We are not going to be needing neither areas or lines because this is not a line chart, but we do need uh, Y axis and X axis, okay? Then the next thing he does is that he updates the outer dimensions. In this case, uh, those are going to be those two that I passed in there as parameters. So we have the width and the height. And then he's just creating the typical group that, and then it's display uh, moving those into a different area. Now, as you guys can see, this is very similar to what he did before in his code. So we actually don't need this anymore. And then we have just the scales in here updating. And let's see how things go now. So when I get this, let's see how much it is actually drawing. So I actually have my chart and it's not doing much. Let's try and refresh it again just to make sure that it's working. Um, it seems it's working, but let's load this slowly just to make things, to see what's happening. So um, I think I see what's the problem. So uh, this one, it's selecting the G, um, and then it's appending for each one of those. Let's try running this just to see what we get in here. <coughs> And then basically if I keep on going, then here is my SVG and since this is version four, then I should be able to say SVG notes and it's not getting anything because those are, that is the enter. If I do that with the SVG enter, still notes is nothing. Let's see what selection is. Oh, that's not there anymore. Um, what else can be wrong? Oh, let's see what this is. So I actually have my chart. So inside that chart, I'm selecting all SVGs and then doing that on. Oh yeah, of course. So then uh, let me go and see what the G enter is. So after that, we actually should have an SVG here, but we are not. Let's see what the G enter is. Notes. Then nothing there yet. Um, so 
So hi, and I'm back. I actually found the error. So remember, I changed this data to datum. Uh, well, actually, I actually have to use data in here because we are selecting more than one element. And because of that, data is the only one that will work. So the thing is that even if I do that, so the nice thing is that actually if I run that now, I do get an SVG. But as you can see, it is actually not setting the width and the height of that. And then inside the G is not really changing much stuff. But it's, at least I have an axis uh, now. So this code is actually not working. And the reason for that is a change that Mike did between version 3 and version 4. Before, if you actually uh, selected something like in here, you did the SVG enter, and then you append everything in there, and then you did the SVG update, that is the one that doesn't have either enter or exit, then this is going, this will apply to the selection, uh, both with the enter and with the things that were updating. But on version four, that doesn't work that way. So what I'm going to do in here, is I'm actually going to create an SVG enter, and then pass all of this in here that it's going to create the uh, SVG and then pass that one in here and the reason I'm doing that is because now I want to do a merge that is a new command that you get in version 4 that is going to join the groups of the SVG enter with the SVG update that is the one that is doing that one in here so just with that I should be able to see um, uh, it getting the width and the height. So let's see if that works. So when I do that, now we have width and height, uh, but we still need to change some things in here. So for instance, so here the idea is that we are actually appending this axis. I'm not going to be doing that anymore because I already added the axis up there. So actually what I'm going to do is that from my group, I'm going to um, select my x-axis and that's because uh, this is how we are doing it here and then I'm going to pass that in there same goes for this I'm going to do a select dot y dot axis and that should change that uh, you already changed the data in here and then it is going to be doing the update but actually to be consistent with what I said before, we are going to create a bars in here. It's going to go all the way to the data binding. And then with this one, I'm going to do a bars dot enter. And you can see it in there, it's going to append that. And then I'm going to merge with my update. So these are the bars that are updating. And here are the bars that are getting created. I'm actually going to assign the class here on the ones that are getting created and then update everything else uh, for everything uh, for after that. So let me reload this. So now we have this. Now we have the G. Um, this G should be getting a transform. I don't see it in there. Um, so let's see so i'm actually missing a semicolon in here so i'm appending that one and then here so basically the idea is that for this one to work i actually have to do the same thing because otherwise this will have only applied to the things that are updating and since this is just running the first time it will not uh, work in there so then when i run it and then I have almost everything. Did you see that it's a little bit off and it's because of the margins. So I'm actually going to apply that um, here. So basically the width and the height is going to be working not with the outer one, with, with the inner one that I just created. And then we need a height. <coughs> and then I'm going to translate this also with the inner height uh, because it's going to, I mean the width, the normal height is the one that contains the full thing and the inner one is the one that it's, it got um, removed the top and the margin uh, and then by the way I have a typo in here. So now I have an inner height 
And then finally, this is going to be also the inner height um, that it's going to be the size of the bars. And then if I reload, voila. So we, now we have this chart. Now, the interesting thing in here is that the way this is working, as I said before, I'm loading the data and then I'm selecting the chart that is this deep in here. And then I'm passing my data and then I'm calling the, my bar chart. So the interesting thing is that if, for instance, let's put a timeout in here. Let's say that this runs after two seconds. And then inside that function, what I'm going to do is call this again. So let's um, try to simulate that my data is changing. So I'm going to say only draw the first 10 elements. OK, so let's see what happens when I do that. So I'm going to refresh this. And then after two seconds, it is actually uh, my chart slice. Oh, sorry, I wrong area. So the one I'm slicing is actually the data. So let's do that. <coughs> so it's one, two seconds, and then it's updating. But you see, it's getting everything messed up. And the reason for that is that it's updating some of the charts, but it's not removing the other bars. So if you guys know your D3, then we know that we have to do an exit remove. And that is kind of the typical thing that you need to change. So usually Mike in his examples, he only does the append or the enter part. But since this code is going to get called again, then that is the part that is going to be executed for these bars. That is the one updating and it also needs to remove elements with the exit. So let's see if we can get that to work. And then after two seconds, now we have our new bars, and now it's working. So actually, we can apply the same concept for changing this into, for instance, a scatter plot. So let's do just that. So I'm actually going to uh, create a new file in here. I'm going to save this as scatterplot.js. And the idea is that it's pretty easy. Stream. Oh, and by the way, I forgot before doing that, sorry. Um, the thing is that you see all of these parameters are fixed in there and then I don't have any way of changing that. And then moreover, uh, we also have these things hard coded and we actually want to get those removed from there. So if we go back into the example that Mike uses in here, then basically the idea is that we can use these functions. We can have some attributes and then we can use these functions to actually alter that. So if we see his example with the timeline, you will see that he has all of these ones in here. And then he even has a um, couple elements in there uh, that we are going to reuse in a minute. So I'm going to use that in our chart too. Uh, he also really has a typo in here, the Y accessor. So basically he has this function that is going, the one that it's converting the data um, using a scale. And then he ba what he does with this function is basically, for instance, in this case, so it's a function that is going to be returned in the chart. So the margin, it looks if it has received any parameters and if it hasn't, then it returns the current margin. That's the typical um, uh, pattern that he uses. And then if it actually has m parameters, then he assigns those parameters to the variable and if not, returns the same chart. Um, so what I'm going to do is that it's, he's using this X value and Y value. So I'm going to copy those two. Uh, you guys can see it in here. So basically these are just a couple accessor functions that are the ones that are going, going to be um, helping us access the data out of the uh, objects that we receive. So I'm going to leave it like this. So basically it's going to assume that the data comes in pairs. So the first one, second one. And then the other thing I'm going to do is actually create my scales up there. So as you see that I have my scales in here. So I'm going to put my scales now here as variables as we can actually have them um, as parameters of my module. So here's going to be my X scale and then my Y scale. He has a range band, a scale band for the first one. <coughs> and 
here he defines the ranges so if you know your d3 you also know that that should be changed inside the updating function because if something changes then we want that happening in there so i'm going to remove this from here and this from here so now we have our x scale y scale and here we go so um, the only thing that it's remaining in here is that i'm going to change my x scale here and then here i'm going to update my y scale i don't need the padding and then everything is broken because i also have here updating the domain so um, actually i'm going to put this in here that is the one changing the domain for this function and then this one in here is the one changing the domain for the y scale then i'm going to put it in here now it's creating an axis and that should be out of the x scale uh, axis left he's going to create that out of the x scale and finally here here is where he's calling his stuff now the cool th stuff is that if you guys see here basically this is doing an x scale out of the d letter now this d letter uh, we are going to be replacing that with the x value so it's, it will be something like this so that's basically getting the x value out of the d object and then we apply the x scale but that is actually what this accessory in here is doing so the nice thing is that we actually can remove all of this and then put my x in here and my y in here this is an x scale and then finally here is exactly the same trick so this is basically uh, y of uh, actually in this case um, so it's applying with the scale too so yes it will be y of v so if i call that then it removes the inner weight and then i have my elements do i have any errors doesn't seem like now in order to make this work since our defaults are frequency and letter then what i'm going to change here are the parameters for this so i'm going to add a width i'm going to say my weight is 600 my height if i don't pass parameters is going to be the default that i placed in there that was 500 or 400 i think here we go these two and and then i have to pass my uh accessors so you do that with the x function and that's because if you see here he has this uh, x function that is going to change the x value inside so i can actually create a function in here that returns for the x is going to be the d letter that comes from the data and then same things uh, same thing for the y so in this case is going to return the d frequency all right so let's see if that works <coughs> so we have an error uh, it's showing expected length and with the width so let's see what we have so i have problems with the y and the height let's see so i do have my frequency here here's the y parameter um let's take a look at what this one is doing in here it's changing the y in here so i have my y oh yes so you see this is doing that with d sub zero uh, but it's actually i think a typo that mike has in there because this should be applying out of the value of the x value of the and then same thing here this should be y value of the so basically you actually see that in the documentation he left in there it's um uh, we say convolution between the two functions so first i call y value of d that gives me the d frequency and then i apply the scale that will get me the pixels so hopefully that was the problem there we go so now the nice thing is that you actually see that we can change that up on order of things so now with that i can copy all of these and then i'm going to create another chart that is going to be a scatter plot so if i do that um, then you can actually see i'm creating a function scatter plot in here 
And then what is the difference between the scatter plot and the bar chart? Well, uh, the main thing is that instead of having bars, we are going to have points. So I'm going to change these for points. I'm going to change the class for point. And then instead of rectangles, it's going to be circles. And then here, instead of bar, it's going to be the class point. And then, as you guys know, in SVG, uh, for the circles, we change things with CX and CY. And then we can put a radius in here, say, of 3. <coughs> and we don't actually need this, because those were for the bars. Now, um, I think uh, that should be it. Let's see if I can actually use that. So the way I will do that is that uh, instead of creating a bar chart, I'm going to create my scatter plot <coughs> in here. And then I'm going to call my scatter plot. It's also a width and a height. And same thing, width, uh, y, and x and y. But I also need to include the file. So I'm going to do that here. And you can actually see here. I'm just going to do that for my link scatter plot. Now, I'm going to create another div. In this case, this is going to be chart two. And I don't need to, let's remove this because we don't need it anymore. I have to make things cleaner. And then I'm going to select the chart two. And in there, I'm going to draw my scatter plot. And hopefully that should work. Uh, let's see what we get. So if I do that, now I have a scatter plot down here. And you guys can see it's pretty much the same thing. And just to show that it actually works um, with other elements, then you can change, for instance, the um, attributes. Or the data doesn't allow me much. So, But this is the way that you can actually create reusable charts out of blocks. So I hope you like it. If you have any comments or questions, please do let me know in the comments. All right. Thank you very much.